We have seen that men's actions, their deliberate and conscious actions, for we will speak afterwards of unconscious habits, all have the same origin. Those that are called virtuous and those that are designated as vicious, great devotions and petty knaveries, acts that attract and acts that repel, all spring from a common source. All are performed in answer to some need of the individual's nature. All have for their end the quest of pleasure, the desire to avoid pain. The idea of good and evil has thus nothing to do with religion or a mystic conscience. It is a natural need of animal races. And when founders of religions, philosophers, and moralists tell us of divine or metaphysical entities, they are only recasting what each ant, each sparrow, practices in this little society. Is this useful to society? Then it is good. Is this hurtful? Then it is bad. The Anarchist Morality is one of my favorite essays written by Pyotr Kropotkin. When I read this essay first, I wept tears of joy because it resonated with me on such a level that I felt I had been renewed. <laughs> my vigor for life had been renewed by this essay. Let me give you a quick summary of this essay. So in this essay, Pyotr Kropotkin shows us many examples from animal life where animals take part in behaviors that can be deemed moral and right and the best for everyone. And upon examining those examples, Kropotkin comes to a conclusion that humans have a tendency towards pleasure and avoidance of pain. And these two create the cycle of egotism or egoism and altruism. So the, these two, however, are not necessarily polar opposites in Kropotkin's mind. He shows us that these two are closely tied together and that if you're being highly egotistical, usually you're not going to receive the greatest benefit if you live in a society. You're not going to be able to benefit from mutual aid. Being altruistic, on the other hand, is highly beneficial for an individual because the rest of the community is going to benefit from one's good deeds. According to Kropotkin, humans derive great pleasure in helping each other and he gives us some examples, some historical examples and some anecdotal evidence. And I personally do have a lot of personal examples and anecdotal evidence for this as well, that helping others may bring such joy that it is immeasurable and it sounds very plausible to me that we humans may be driven to altruistic acts due to some evolutionary advantage of such mentality very simply put the thesis of anarchist morality that humans are inherently good and they are inherently drawn to solidarity and that is because this brings the most benefit to all members of a particular community. And this thesis resonates greatly with me because I've always had a hard time with the Machiavellian perception of the world. For a long time, I struggled feeling like I was inherently a bad person, that I was born flawed. And that probably reminds you of something. And I struggled much with identifying my own morality. And I struggled much with accepting myself. And I've always examined everything I did very closely. And it was torturous for me because I, in fact, never was an evil or a bad person. I was just misled greatly by religion and capitalism to believe that I was always the guilty one. I was the bad one. Therefore, I deserved all the bad that happens to me. I deserve to be a wage slave. I'm not smart enough. I'm not independent enough. I cannot think for myself. So all of this can be very easily debunked if you look at some of the evidence so if you ever struggle 
with similar issues, I do recommend you read this essay. It is written in a very emotional language, and much of the evidence that is given is anecdotal. However, I think that the major theses are extremely helpful in beginning to think of oneself as an actual worthy human being. Kropotkin looks much at the axiom or a thesis of do unto others as you wish had been done to you or treat others the way you wish to be treated and this is often attributed to Chinese philosophy as far as I remember but I think it's a pretty universal statement that most of the peoples of the world have at some point come up with so I don't think any single nation can claim ownership of this phrase Kropotkin also talks much about solidarity and how it becomes habitual in many animals and humans. And he talks about how unconsciously we are drawn to what we perceive to be morally good. And what is morally good, again, he defines as useful or beneficial to the community one lives in. And I find this to be simple yet profound because we oftentimes have no explanation as to why we choose something. But we cannot deny the influence of our community, the people who we share much with. And I think that once we start examining our individual motivations for each of our actions, we may find that they are driven by this desire for everyone to benefit at least to some extent. Even if we think it's purely egotistical, I think that it's important to remember that if something is good for us, ultimately it's good for others as well. Because if we are happy, it may bring benefit to others as well. Unless, of course, it is something destructive, which is a totally different issue. If one pursues individual happiness and enjoyment, usually one will become a calmer, more well-rounded individual. Of course, this varies greatly. So the overlap of egoism and altruism is going to happen at one point or another. And ultimately, most of us do not want to live alone on the deserted island, surrounded by things that are going to fulfill all of our needs. We do want human connection, and we do want the company of other people, usually. So I think the principle of solidarity is very easily proven with one's own experiences, but I'm happy to look at more data concerning this particular topic. Kropotkin also responds to a question about how, if the anarchists are most preoccupied with solidarity and doing unto others as they wish had been done to them, why do they allow violence to happen in their ranks? Why do they sometimes support violence? And Kropotkin responds with a very simple answer. He says that, well, if one has to protect one's life, then this is a necessity. And also he talks about how if an anarchist is experiencing a crisis and they believe that they have become evil, they have become a snake, then they're going to ask their fellow anarchists to kill them in order to get rid of the evil in this community. And this obviously is a very exaggerated example. But in this essay as well, Kropotkin mentions too that the anarchists are not the kind of people who see no evil and hear no evil. They're the kind of people who want to fight the evil from within using solidarity, mutual aid, strive for freedom and equality, etc. So if one feels certain predispositions towards violence, then one can ask for help from their comrades. And this is actually mentioned. Kropotkin says if an anarchist is unsure about anything, what they should do is ask their comrade. And I think that this is a brilliant advice because it is so simple, but yet it is indeed a great source of help to just ask your fellow humans 
to help you decide what's good and what's evil, what's harmful to the society and what's beneficial for the society, and together discuss and come to a better understanding communally. Yet my favorite, absolutely favorite bit from this essay is when Kropotkin talks about sharing and talks about what drives us and animals and plants towards sharing our life's resources. And he says that it is the abundance of life that actually makes us desire to share with others. And when I read the statement, I am shaken to my core and I feel such great reassurance in the statement because this is how I've always felt. I felt that I had so much to give Yet I was so afraid of giving too much, of others exploiting my desire to share. And here Kropotkin tells me that that's great that I have much to share, that I should keep doing that, that that means I'm actually fulfilling my life's purpose and my life's essence flows in my desire to share. So when I first read the statement, I celebrated because I felt like my soul has resonated so deeply with this person from the past that it cannot be an accident. And I hope that this is not rooted in some kind of mystical belief in me because I've had enough of that. But I just love the statement that the abundance of life's energy gives humans the desire to share just because. We don't have to have an agenda. We don't have to have some kind of profitable goal in mind to want to share. We want to share because we're humans. So I can talk about this essay for three hours. And in fact, this is how much my husband and I spend. And we haven't even finished discussing every single bit of this essay. So I encourage you to read it and participate in the discussion as well. And I hope that it also helps improve your life just like it did to me.